But there was a man there, a man that knew her need, that knew her situation, that knew everything about her. But what's particular about this encounter is that the first thing he does isn't start to say, you know, what it is that she needs. He doesn't start by pointing out her faults and pointing out her failures and telling her whole life history. And doesn't even start off by asking what she needs. But he, he makes a statement. He doesn't even ask, but he says, give me to drink. Mm. He says, give me to drink. See, in the natural, this is a man who was by the well and had nothing to draw with. The Bible tells us that he was weary, he was tired, he'd been journeying, and there was no one else around. And so while he was resting, he saw this woman and he asked to give him to drink. Now, we have to see that Christ took advantage of this situation because no doubt this woman wasn't going to open her mouth and talk to him because she knew who she was. Yeah. She knew her background. She knew her baggage that she came with. So she wasn't going to initiate a conversation. But Christ knew who she was as well and knew that there was a greater need. So what he did, he took advantage of this, of this common ground that they have, so to speak, because aside from this, they had nothing in common. She was a woman. He was a man. In this day and age, even that alone was enough for him to shun her and not talk to her and, and ignore her. And on top of being a woman, she was a Samaritan woman. People that the Jews had nothing to do with. And above and beyond that, she was a woman that even her own people ostracized. So there was no way that she would initiate a conversation. There was no reason for her to talk and strike up a conversation with this man. But he knew who she was as well. And so he asked that he give her the drink. He took advantage of this, this common Thing that they, something that they had in common. There was a well and they were both weary. See, the man, Christ, was weary from his journey and this woman was weary from her situation. So he asked, give me to drink. Automatically, this woman knew that there was something different about this man. She sensed that there was something special, something peculiar something peculiar about this man and so she she asked she's like how is it that you're talking to me you know no doubt she probably did one a double take and probably looked around to see if there's anyone else that that this man was talking to because surely he couldn't be talking to her and so she asked that how is it that you being a jew as a drink of me which am a samaritan woman for the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Why is it that, I can imagine her shock, knowing her situation, knowing who she was, and knowing who he was. Imagine her shock that he would open his mouth and initiate a conversation, not only a conversation, but ask something of her. You can imagine, if you just take a walk in her shoes, this man who, no one, it must have been years or a long time since she had a conversation with someone, being outcast as she was. And this man, this Jew above all else, was asking her to drink. And Christ, being as he, as he was, says, you know, let, let me tell you something. You know, I asked you this question, but I, I want to see your response. Because if you knew who I was, mm -hmm. if you knew what I had to give, I wouldn't even have had, had a chance to ask you to give me to drink. Because if you knew who I was, if you knew what I possessed, I, you would ask me for the living water that I have. Yes. And, and so with this, this woman, you can imagine at this point, she is just perplexed and just, just in awe. But... She continues to ask the question. Now, oftentimes when we are dealing with Christ, we ask questions. But our questions are like, Lord, why this? Why me? Why, why, why am I going through this situation? Why? 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 But this woman asked the right questions. Because you see, she knew that there was something different about this man. And she knew that he had something to offer just by the fact of who he was. She knew that he had something to offer. But it still wasn't quite clear to her what it was. Because you see, this woman was still caught up in her situation. She was still caught up in, in her situation and who she was and where she was. She was still caught up in the situation that she knew that there was something crucial, something important, something different that this man was offering her, but she still couldn't quite get it. And, and I'm going somewhere this morning, so stay with me this morning. And so she asked him a question. She says, she's looking in his hand, she said, but you have nothing to draw water with. How is it that you can give me some, some water. When, you know, we're here at the well, there's, there's no cup, there's no nothing for you to draw. You have nothing. How can you give me water? And then she asked a question. She didn't just leave it at that, but she asked a question. She 
said, Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Are you, are you greater than the, the very one? She's like, I know there's something peculiar about you. Can you possibly be greater than, than our father that, that gave us this well in the first place? Sometimes we need to learn to ask the right questions, the, the kinds of questions that will solicit answers. You know, in my work all day, that's what I do. We, we're trained how to ask questions, because you can ask a question. You know, if I ask you, how are you doing today? Fine. It's a perfectly legitimate answer. But if I start to prod and say, so what has happened with you today? You know, what was your situation? You know, if I start to dig a little deeper, I'm going to draw from you. I'm going to draw more information from you. And that's what the woman was doing. She was asking the right kinds of questions to get the answers that she needed. For she knew she had a need and she knew this man had something enticing to offer. So she asked the right questions to solicit the response that she needed. And she got that response. She, Christ told her that whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. I shall give him water that, will ne that shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, if you think of this from the natural perspective, it seems kind of silly to have water that would continually spring up, right? It, it seems... That just doesn't make sense. From all we know about science and all we know uh, about how our bodies work, it seems silly that you'd be able to take a drink in the natural and never have to drink again. All right, just think about it for a second. How strange does that sound? That you should be able to drink once and never have to drink again. I mean, we know that our bodies require water on a regular basis. We know that if we're not hydrated, we're going to be dehydrated. And eventually, you know, systems will start breaking down. And if we go long enough, it'll eventually lead to death. So uh, imagine just on the natural, how silly it sounds to have that well within you that will never make you thirsty again. But this woman, you have to understand, this woman was so desperate for change. She was so desperate for something different that even though this, this man came with a proposition that was so wild, so out of left field, she's like, really? You mean I never have to come to this well again? I, I don't have to go out and, and be afraid of the people and have to deal with their, their, their stares and their, and their whisperings. You mean that I can have something that I never have to come to this well? She was desperate. She said, you know what? Give it to me. I want it. Whatever it is, I want it. I want this, I want this living water because I don't want to have to come out again. I don't want to have to, to deal with the people and deal with their disapproving glance and, and deal with the, the way they whisper about me, they talk about me behind my back and in front of my face. I don't I want to have to deal with that. You know, my heart is already overwhelmed by the way that I've been outcast from society. I have no friends. I have no one to talk to, no one close to me. I, I've got nothing. If you can give me this water that, that is within me, I will take it. I'll do anything to have it. She was so desperate that something so off, so wild in the natural was appealing to her. And so she was desperate for it. She wanted it. But you see, she was still caught up in her situation, so she still didn't quite understand right. what the master was saying. She still didn't have a grasp on what he was offering. She was still so caught up in herself in the situation that drew her there in the middle of the day that she still didn't quite understand what it is that she offered. She knew that there was something great, so she continued to question. She continued to ask because she knew there was something great. And so this is sort of the, the turning point of the story. Well, this is the crux of the story. This is the breaking point for this woman in the story because she's so desperate for something different. So desperate for a change in her life that would take her away from her situation, that would remove her from, from the pang that she felt. She was so desperate that she's willing to do anything. How desperate are we this morning? How, how desperate are we for what Christ has to offer? Are we like this woman who would give anything to have what the Master is offering? So this point in the story, Christ gives her another command. He says, go call thy husband and come hither. Now you have to understand, in, in this day and age, this woman... There was a reason that she was outcast. There was a reason that she was on the fringes of society. And part of the reason that she was living with this man who wasn't her husband. She had had five husbands before. And now she's living with this man who wasn't even her husband.